So here, what I have is a list of CSV files, comma-separated value files, that contain information about a particular aspect of biodiversity data. Many of them, you'll see, are the values of Darwin core fields, like basis of record and country code and establishment means. So these are dictionaries. These dictionaries get built every time a migrator runs. It checks to see if there's something new in there that has never been seen in VertNet before with respect to one of these categories. Is there some new combination of geography? Is there new, some new combination of the taxonomic classification? If it's new, it adds it to the dictionary. And it becomes a resource over time for lookups. I'll show you one of these files. I have it open in Notepad, I think. Maybe, no, actually, don't tell anyone, town, I opened it in Excel. Uh -oh. With one simple reason, and that was that it was easy to zoom. I'm not going to manipulate the data, I'm going to zoom. Okay, this is the structure of one of those lookup tables. And what it contains is the value that was found in the original database, the value that it should be according to VertNet, whether that's a standard, if this one is a standard value or not, and whether or not it has been checked. So everything with a one means that a human went through and decided what the translation should be from this original to the standardized version. Now, why would you do that? Why would you change primary data like that? Isn't that a loss of information? The answer is yes. However, I need to do this if I want people to find what they're looking for. So what I'm doing here is creating something to facilitate search. And ideally, what I want to do is I want to keep the original as well with the original data. VertNet is not doing that for everything yet. It is propagating the ones to search on. But it's a high priority to make sure that all and every original field goes with the record. So part of the process then is whenever something new arrives, <coughs> it gets added to this table and the value of checked is zero. It's not been checked. And the value of the standard sex is blank. So there's a human in this case, me, who checks on this table. Whenever there's something zero there, I need to, ch to check it out, provide a standard value, and then change this to one. And as soon as I've done so, every time that data get migrated in the future, it can use this lookup and standardize the sex field. And the same thing is true for every one of those other tables in this list. <clears throat> Some of the tables are much more complicated. For example, geography has fields for verbatim continent, verbatim country, verbatim state province, and so on, as well as what it should be interpreted as. Now remember in the example for the Michigan specimen, and we looked at the geography, information. <clears throat> the original verbatim locality information has been maintained, including the part in the higher geography. So the original name of the country has been maintained, even though the standardized one has been changed, and a country code for it has been added. Right? And so whenever I encounter this combination of geography fields, I can turn it into a standardized version without doing any other work. And that's a service that is provided by VertNet based on the data processing workflow. So the next thing that happens to get data to VertNet is that I have published or I have migrated data and the result is a Darwin, core sorry, a Darwin Core text file 
and a set of reports. Those reports go back to the institutions and they tell them, listen, we found something that probably isn't right, that you might want to check. And there's a report for taxonomy, a report for all the fields in geography and so on. So they're, again, they're getting something for nothing. They're getting basically the results of having gone through a refined process back in their labs to say, oh, here are all the specimens where there seems to be a problem. If I have time and energy, I'll go out and fix those. I'll check in the collection, I'll make sure everything's correct. I'll improve the data in the collection. Once that's been done, and they say, okay, I think we're good, let's publish those data, then VertNet gets involved again to help them to put their collection into the IPT. They help them by setting up the user account on that IPT and help them to get the correct metadata in the correct place. Then, it's an automated process to take the data file that was produced during migration and publish it in the IPT. And after having done that, that's the hard part, and it's done once. After that, that can happen automatically over time. And we can publish automatically from now until Darwin Core changes. And then we'll have to fix things that break because of the changes in Darwin Core. But the maintenance level is quite low, and that's the point. Yes, Town. So those translation tables you just showed us, in some ways they're alternative to data cleaning? They are, I would call them data augmentation because it's doing a particular thing. It's facilitating search and okay. discovery. But I could just as easily sit down with my data set and set all of the you know, nonsense symbols to unknown and set everything that you know, I can interpret as a F or female as female. Yes. So if I clean that up, then that migration table essentially disappears, right? No, the migration table can persists for all time. It's right. an archival record of everything strange that's ever been encountered and well, how to deal with it. But those strange things become pretty much irrelevant. What happens, technically speaking, is the next time you migrate your data, there, that isn't in there. Yeah. It looks and it sees the standard values already in the data. The standard value is good, leave it. Yes. So it, pr it produces or it serves two purposes. Right. One, to help search when you come to the portal, and the other, to tell the curator something strange there. You might want to check. Yes. And that brings up a, a very important point, and that is that the aggregator, which in this case is VertNet, the one who brings together data from all over the place, is not the primary <coughs> authority on the data. That always lies in the hands of the sources, the data publishers, the original sources. They will always have the authoritative information. And so there should be a way to lead back to them. And the way to lead back to them is through connections to their original data and through the, the contacts for those institutions. So <clears throat> this was kind of a brief overview of where external support in, the case, in this case of VertNet, helps to increase the overall end product. The data quality coming out of VertNet, I would say, is demonstrably better than that on the average. And it's definitely much more complete than it is on the average. I invite you to look on GBIF's data set and compare things coming out of VertNet versus everything else. And tell me if you don't find it to be true. So I think that's sufficient. I think that's put us into context that data management, data publishing are obvious next steps to making a greater impact, greater value of the collections, and that there should be a way to end up from publishing going all the way back to, to the data management process for improvements over time.